Yo, what's going on, guys? It is your boy Nick here, back again with a brand new video today. We're going to be continuing my series in which I review every single Marvel Cinematic Universe film up to release of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Today we're going to be reviewing one of my personal favorites in the franchise, Captain America Civil War, which is the first film in Phase 3. If you guys watched my, re my review for the last two Captain America movies, you guys will know that Captain America is my favorite superhero of all time, and the trilogy is one of my favorite movie trilogies of all time, making both the first and the second movie some of my favorite superhero movies, but also some of my favorite movies of all time. Captain America Civil War, it's been out for six years now, I don't think, I, I feel like, I feel like it's been long enough for me to say this, I think Captain America Civil War is one of the most well-made movies I've ever seen. I'm not saying it's the best movie ever made, I'm not trying to compare it to other incredible masterpiece films or anything, I'm just saying that, like, it's just so well-made, and of the Captain America trilogy, this one's my personal favorite. Although Captain America's, like, so far, thus into the series, is the only, uh, like, franchise I've had in the MCU where I actually feel like the sequels have improved upon the other releases, because Iron Man 1 was gr a great movie, then Iron Man 2 and 3 were fine, but they were way too messy to be better than the first one, and Thor The Dark World just wasn't as entertaining as the first one. I mean, it's okay, but it, and it's watchable, but it's nowhere near as good as the first one, and even Avengers Age of Ultron, as fun as that movie is, it's notably no, it's noticeably not as high in quality as the first Avengers. Captain America, so far, is the only series we've had this far in the MCU where I actually feel like each movie has improved upon the last, and Captain America Civil War is like the best example of this. So we have a huge returning cast, so many Avengers people that I'm not even going to go into them individually, I'm just going to list them all off. We Of course we have Chris Evans, Robert Downey Jr., Sebastian Stan, Scarlett Johansson, Jeremy Renner, Paul Bettany, Elizabeth Olsen, Paul Rudd, Don Cheadle, Anthony Mackie, and Emily Van Camp. All of them are great. Enormous cast. But they're all great and they all give some of their best performances as these characters in this movie. It's kind of hard to have a movie with this many characters work together so well, but these guys just make it work. They just make it work, which is also interesting considering there's a whole lot of tension between these characters, and these actors just pull it off flawlessly in my opinion. We also have two introductions to two of the most iconic characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. First off, I'm going to talk about the introduction to the perfectly casted Chadwick Boseman as T'Challa, also known as Black Panther. Oh man, the late great, rest in peace Chadwick Boseman, the late great gives a phenomenal performance as this character. And the introduction is so compelling. It's a great introduction to the character. It really gets you emotionally invested in it, wanting to see more for the Black Panther movie that comes out later down the road. And they did a phenomenal job. T'Challa is a very compelling character. He's so well written, and Chadwick Boseman plays him perfectly. Like, the, the Russos really... Oh, I, I can't give enough credit to the Russos for how well they made this script. This script is so well written, I think, that they just did a phenomenal job getting all the little things in there and tying it all together neatly, and the whole Black Panther stuff, in my opinion, is one of the best examples of that. We also get not as exciting of an introduction, but still a very exciting introduction to the amazing Spider-Man that is Tom Holland. So, I'm not going to talk about it too much, I'll talk about this later on down the road when I do my Spider-Man Homecoming review. I wasn't initially all that sure about Tom Holland, but re-watching this movie last night, I really do feel like Tom Holland does have a pretty good introduction to this movie, and I think that down the road, he really made a phenomenal Spider-Man. I will say, though, he doesn't have too much time in this movie, but the moments he's there, he's very charming, and I do like him a lot in this movie, and it's a very, it's a nice little introduction to the character that doesn't give away too much, because it wants you to, like, go see Sp Spider-Man Homecoming so that you, you go to see that movie because you're just a little bit invested here, and I think that that's probably the best way they could have done that. I also want to give a quick mention to Daniel Bruhl, I hope that's how you say it, uh, who makes a great and also compelling villain as Baron Zemo. He's interesting because he's, like, the first villain we had in a Captain America movie thus far who isn't, like... Like, I mean, he is kind of crazy, but he isn't, like, Hydra. He's not part of some crazy cult or anything. I mean, he is he is kind of into some weird stuff, but... I don't know, he's, like... I feel like he's, like, the first villain we've met so far who isn't just a monster, like, to be completely honest. He's so compelling in the sense that, like, he's a very tragic character, and although his reasons for doing what he's doing are not good reasons, you understand him. And I think Daniel Bruhl, I hope I'm saying that right, gives a great performance as Zemo. I think Zemo's one of the most interesting villains that we've had thus far into the MCU. I know he was, uh, he had been previously known for playing whatever his character was in Inglorious Bastards, I forgot what it was. And his character in that one is, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say he's like the character in this one, because his character in Inglorious Bastards is just vile, but his character in this one has a little bit of a similar vibe, but like way more compelling, and I think that really works for his character. So the very basis as to why I love this movie so much is the conflict. I won't go too much into the conflict if you haven't seen this movie, but the conflict between these characters, it's a very complicated conflict, and the things that, it's not a black and white conflict, it's a very gray area conflict. And it's, that's why I like it, cause like, that's why everybody is at tension here, because they all, 
they all want to get a very important they want, all want to solve a very important problem but they all have very different ways about going about it and that's what caused a lot of the tension between these characters and it's like it's a new original idea and they did it so well this could have really been a bad movie but it was so well done I can't give them enough credit for it it's a very it's a it's a flawless script like I, I gotta give them credit for it it's a very flawless idea and they did it so well the thing I like about this conflict is that every single character's point of view has some merit to it or is understandable to a certain degree you may not necessarily agree with them but you understand them you understand why they feel a certain way about the thing kind of like if you've ever seen the dark knight the dark knight's a superhero movie where everybody's point of view like you understand their motivations and even if you don't agree with everybody in the movie everybody's point of view like you understand them they make sense to a certain degree you understand why they think the way they do this movie does that just as well as the dark knight in my opinion i know that's i'm probably gonna get a lot of hate for that it's probably a hot take but man this is it's just a well-made movie and i feel like they did such a great job at making everybody's point of view seem like it has some merit to it and because everybody's point of view has some merit to it it's a very emotional build-up to a climactic fight so yes it's a very fun movie with a lot of great action sequences but there's emotion behind it and that's why it's such a great movie because every there's actually good emotions behind these characters you, you love these characters and you hate to see them have the conflict that they're having but overall, you understand why it's happening. Of course, I can't talk about Captain America Civil War without talking about the phenomenal stunt work, as well as action sequences and fight sequences. Oh my lord, the, like, the Russos, whoever they hired to do this stuff, knocked it out of the park. This, this has some of the best stunt work I think I've ever seen in any action movie, and I think they did a phenomenal job. They really... Oh, they did such a great job, because like, they used a lot more practical this time around than they did with... CGI and stuff. I think that was a great choice, and it's also there's so the sequences are so beautifully edited. I feel like this movie doesn't get enough credit for its editing. The editing in this movie is so top notch. It edits all the sequences very well. It's a great looking movie, and all the whenever these conflicts are going on, it feels like there's actually like risks happening, or it feels like something's at stake there. And I just can't give these people enough credit. The direction of this movie is flawless, in my opinion. Even though this is a more serious movie in the MCU, it does still have some nice jokes played throughout it. It doesn't have too many jokes, which I'm actually happy about, because if there were too many jokes, I feel like it would have bogged down the the conflict of the film, but I do think that the jokes, whenever they're there, are well-placed jokes. I feel like they have class, and I feel like they fit the story well. So I'm glad that they're not overusing a whole lot of jokes. They're, they're using jokes whenever appropriate, and I feel like they all landed. Of course, I won't go into spoilers, but the payoff of this movie is extremely emotional. I'm not going to say who wins or what happens or anything like that if you haven't seen this movie. Now, if you haven't seen this movie, what are you doing? Go see Captain America Civil War. But the payoff is extremely emotional, and I think that regardless of whether you're happy or you're sad, I know that you like you felt something when you watched this movie. I really do think that. Captain America Civil War is one of my favorite movies of all time. I think it's one of the best superhero movies ever made. I think it's one of the most well-made films I've ever seen. And I, really, I don't think there's any flaws with it. I watched it last night, and I couldn't think of a single thing I didn't like. It's very well made. I gotta give it props for that. Overall, of course, I'm gonna give Captain America Civil War a 10 out of 10, and I'm gonna give it a grade of an A+. So that was my review of Captain America Civil War. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Make sure that you hit the like button, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get notified about my latest videos. And make sure you tune into my channel in just a few more days to watch my review of the next movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Doctor Strange. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and yeah, that's been it. Peace!